Hi guys, welcome to Linux Automations. And in this today's video, so we are going to talk about how do we install Jenkins Slave through your uh, Jenkins Master Web Console. And for that, we require uh, uh, some of the prerequisites. So, which is of course the Jenkins Master node. So, my previous video shows like how to install Jenkins Master on CentOS 7 operating system. So, you can just watch that and set your master node and once you have your master node ready so you can have your jenkins slave to be configured and you know what is the purpose of slaves is usually is um, uh, whenever you want to run the jobs on a particular environment so you know, so we set we can set up the environment on a particular server and your jenkins can trigger the jobs or run the jobs on that particular server so uh, that is a major reason so you can use um, uh, Jenkins slaves and along with that so you can also reduce the burden or you can distribute the load of your uh, Jenkins master so also you can use Jenkins slave and here my Jenkins slave is also I'm picking up CentOS 7 operating system with SC Linux and firewall disabled so that you'll not have any issues as a beginner and also it should have Java installed as a prerequisite so it also should have Java like your Jenkins master node so let's go on quick quickly have a, a quick demo or how do you install Jenkins um, you know so slave so uh, you know, so the easiest way would be so connecting through uh, connecting through uh, a simple uh, web console and having a SSH username and password or SSH and key so here I have a connection so you in order to install your master node in order to install a slave software on the slave node so initially it should establish a connection so that connection should be a, an ssh connection so i can i'll be using an ssh connection uh, i mean i'll be enabling the ssh connection details inside the web console and after that i'll simply launch a agent on this particular node and it will install it so let's quickly go on do that particular part and to do that so here is my jenkins dashboard so which i already logged into this dashboard and after that so here you have a, a manage Jenkins option so you can just go to manage Jenkins and here I have different options whereas I can just go and see a manage nodes which allows you to add some nodes to this particular Jenkins master and here right, you have a master node which is up and running and it has some details and in order to add a new node you can just go for a new node and here I have uh, the no name so uh, I usually prefer to give the host name of the server so you can just give the host name of the server by running the host name command and I would like to give that particular name and it's a permanent agent I would like to have it and let's continue and here is the uh, basic information your uh, Jenkins node require in order to configure it so here uh, if, if you want to provide any description you can provide and assume I need a, a executor so that means the parallel bits which this particular uh, slave can run is number five so you can increase or decrease based on the capacity or your requirement is and along with that so in which directory you want to install your uh, uh, your um, um, so in in which uh, I mean directory you would like to install your Jenkins slave so I would like to prefer giving my home directory of the user so which I am using slash home slash admin I would like to prefer to give that and here is a very important one so which is labels so what kind uh, a labels is nothing but uh, labels is the name which you use in the jobs which you map to run that particular job into a particular slave node so labels are really important so assume if I if this particular slave I'm using is to set up a Java environment where I can run all my Java related jobs in this particular server I can view Java or if this particular slave is you know, assume you are running it for setting up your dockers so where you have some docker setup a docker environment setup you can just give a, an, a label a docker so that in the job you can map this particular uh, um, you know uh, map that particular uh, label in the job so that it runs on that particular servers now I would like to uh, label it as Java so that uh, you know so uh, I can give that particular name and also you can you can also uh, create another server with the same label where Jenkins will pick up you know so any one of the available server out of the available lab labeled servers and here uh, I just want to use this particular node as much as possible so that's the default option I would like to go for and here are the a couple of options which you have available 
and so one of the options which you have is you can run some command which is an SSH command directly on the you know, um, uh, which you can give the command where it can run from the master or else I would prefer to go for SSH uh, directly from the web console and here are the some of the information I need to provide so I need to provide the IP address information of the server so I would like to give the IP address and here is the IP address and the credentials to connect to the server. So there are no, no credentials right now. I would like to add some credentials. And the type of credentials I'm adding here is SSH credentials, but not with username and password, but with SSH username and private key. And the key, uh, whether you can directly copy into this particular um, uh, web console, or you can keep it inside the server and you give the location of that particular key. Either of the way it is fine, but my username is admin, and I want to enter the key directly. So let me copy the key which I have already with my with me and I'm going to copy this and paste it here uh, or else if you have any of the location you can just give the location of that particular one. Right now I'm selecting enter directly option and I don't have any passphrase to the key I am, and I'm which leaving it as empty and along with that I have uh, an ID and description. So the ID is uh, it's a Jenkins uh, Jenkins slave key, so something uh, you know, which you can keep it in a meaningful name so that you will not face any issue in later time while mapping. And here are my uh, credentials already. I can use that particular one. So now you will, whenever you just click on save, it tries to launch an agent on this particular node with the username and key, whatever you have given. And a very important option over here, uh, which is basically um, <clears throat> a known host file strategy, which would like to go for non-verifying verification strategy. And in case if you would like to provide any more advanced options, it is still available, you can provide. And whereas if you don't give that, it's all empty and just click on save. So once you have done that, it will try to connect to the remote node and it will try to install agent. But in our case, it is going to be a failure. So agent is offline. And of course the agent configuration is failed. Why? Because we have missed one of the prerequisites. So that is a Java installation. It doesn't have any Java so that uh, you know, it couldn't able to do the slave installation. So what I have to do is I have to install Java. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, I'm done. I can just go ahead and relaunch the agent once again. You can just click on launch agent again. So it will try to install the agent again. And now the installation is successful and you'll be able to see that this is a Unix agent and agent is successfully connected and it is online. And you can just go back to the nodes and you can see the two, no uh, I mean, uh, the another, uh, node is also available which has a slave which is also showing in the build executor status like it is also in another slave which is added so in your jobs you can go ahead and map your uh, job to run on this particular node and it will run on that particular node okay so hopefully you have enjoyed my video so thanks for watching my video so please subscribe to my channel thank you thank you very much